and this is called the cricothyroid membrane, and the whole thing isn't actually shown on here, but this bit here, like the thyrohyoid ligament before, the two sides double over and they cross over and they, uh, they thicken up to form a cricothyroid, uh, a median cricothyroid ligament. Okay? Now, uh, you can feel this space on, on yourself, so if, uh, if, D, if you just bring the, uh, the camera up here, okay, you can feel the laryngeal prominence across there. The next thing down that you feel is the, uh, is the cricoid cartilage, and between there, you feel a, uh, a little gap, okay? Now, get familiar with this. This is the space, that, this is where the cricothyroid membrane sits, okay? And it's a good idea to get used to this particular one, because although you don't really want to be in this position, it might become very handy at some stage, because a, an emergency procedure called the cricothyroidotomy is formed by, uh, by placing a needle through this area if, uh, if necessary to, um, uh, in, if there's a laryngeal obstruction or a foreign body or something like that stuck in the upper airway. Now, I won't talk about that too much now, but Dee will take you through it later. But, um, but just be aware that that's the space that we're talking about, okay? So do get familiar with that uh, now if you can, all right? Now, what isn't um, so obvious from here though, okay? What isn't so obvious is that actually this membrane isn't just at the front because in fact it stretches, if I basically put this across here, it stretches all the way back here. Can you see that? Okay, going from um, uh, going from the thyroid cartilage, okay, all the way down to the base of the arytenoids, okay? So that there is all the cricothyroid membrane. Now, it's uh, possibly not uh, that easy to see here, so what we'll do is we'll just kind of go over to the, uh, the screen again. And we'll see that this uh, is the thyroid cartilage, this is the cricoid. And what we have here, extending all the way back to the uh, base of the arytenoids and, sort of, and extending from the, uh, the superior part of the uh, cricoid cartilage, is this, uh, is this uh, huge, thick cricothyroid membrane, and at the top of it, it's particularly strong and thickened, and this little area, uh, because of that uh, strong free edge, we call it the vocal ligament. Okay? So that's the vocal ligament across there, going from the base of the arytenoid to the thyroid cartilage. Okay, and that is represented on this um, on this uh, model by this area here. Okay, now what is not shown on the slide quite so easily is how far medially this projects. Okay, so it's not just coming up straight across here. It's all it's going it's going really far medially. Okay, and I wonder if I can just point out to you that it's ex it's um, uh, extending from the top of the the top of the cricoid cartilage there. Can you see that properly? Okay, mm. I'll just let you focus in on that. Can you see that that there? that I'm trying, if I can, to put my forceps up. That is the superior surface of the cricoid cartilage, and we have the cricothyroid membrane extending from that upwards to the base of the arytenoids and forwards to the uh, thyroid cartilage, yeah? So that's that, and what I'd also like to point out while we've got you in this position, okay, is the kind of conical nature of, uh, because of that projection, the way it sort of rounds up, it kind of, it comes over this curve. And the reason I'm calling it conical is because it's, um, you sometimes hear it referred to as the sides of the cricothyroid membrane. You sometimes hear them referred to as the conus elasticus, and uh, they're important in speech because as air comes bellowing out of here, um, these whole sides will shake, and Dee will talk about that a little bit later, but, uh, but that, can be, um, uh, that can be relevant in the, uh, in the sounds that you are able to produce. So that's one of our internal membranes. Now, if we go back to our diagram, uh, oh, sorry, actually, in fact, before we go back to the diagram, I'll show you on here. There's another one, okay? There's another major internal membrane, and it's called the quadrangular membrane. It goes down from the, uh, from the uh, epiglottis to the base of the arytenoids and forwards, okay? So it's, got, it's called quadrangular because there's four bits to it. So it goes down across here to the top of the arytenoids now, but then it continues. It slides down this little area here, okay? And it goes back out across uh, across this gap, and then it comes up the sides of the epiglottis, and that makes your that makes your complete surface. Okay, so four sides, and if we uh, if we have a look at this diagram across here, we can see it a little bit more clearly. Okay, so that's the thyroid, that's the epiglottis. Okay, we've got this, we, we've got it reaching down to the top of the arytenoids, sliding down here. We've got a free edge across here, which is uh, overlying uh, these uh, vocal ligaments, and coming back up here. So that's our quadrangular ligament again with a thickened area here, which we now call the vestibular ligament. We've got the vocal ligament and the vestibular ligament. Now, what is perhaps not so easy to uh, appreciate on this slide is that the, the vocal ligament is projecting very far medially. The vestibular one is also, but not quite as far. So if we have a look at this slide instead, this is the angle here. Now, I'll show you on my, on my model what we're actually looking at here, just to make sure we've got this correct. Okay? 
what we are looking at is that's anterior, okay? If I turn this posteriorly, and then we look down, okay, and we see the epiglottis there and the hyoid here, okay, what we start to what we start to see, okay, we're starting to look at a uh, uh, at a view across here. So if we look back at our slide, okay, uh, if we look back across here, that's what we're looking at. Okay, and we have the epiglottis, and this here is the quadrangular membrane reaching down across here to form the vestibular ligament, okay, at the top of the arytenoids. And here's the cricoid uh, uh, cartilage, and that is the very far at rest, the very far medially projecting uh, cricothyroid membrane with its thickened vocal ligaments. Okay, it's underneath the uh, the um, vestibular ligaments, but it's far projecting more medially. Okay, so that's that. And the reason I mention it is because what then happens? Okay, so we've got the basic structure, but what we then do is this. Okay. Now this is a bit, um, you know, this is a bit confusing to see when you when you when you first get introduced to it. But what we've done, okay, we're now looking, okay, from the back, okay, that's the epiglottis there, okay, and we've basically draped a layer of mucosa over this, and we've draped it very very loosely, okay. So what we have is a view from behind, okay, from the. In fact, I'll just show you on here. We are looking at this angle here, okay, across here, all right, and. There's one angle here, and then one from just slightly to the side, okay, so that you can see things clearly. And what we have is our epiglottis here, our quadrangular membrane is here, with our thickened vestibular ligaments. This is the cricoid cartilage, and this is the cricothyroid membrane with its thickened vocal ligaments. Okay? And if you drape over very, very loosely, uh, imagine draping a blanket, okay? you, have, you form these folds, and we basically change the names of things based on this case. Okay? So now we talk about here, this top end of the uh, quadrangular membrane, we call an ariepiglottic fold, okay? and that's that little bit there. Okay? And as it goes over the vestibular ligament, okay, we call the vestibular ligament the vestibular fold. Then it drapes loosely through here, okay? and this space that is created is called the laryngeal ventricle. Okay. And that laryngeal ventricle, in fact, if we look from the side slightly, you can actually see it extending up here, this area. But if you look from the side, okay, that area there looks a bit like that. Okay. If you followed it in with a camera, you'd see this. You can actually put a camera in there and follow it into the ventricles and see that side. And it's called the laryngeal saccule. Okay. So that's the ventricle, that's the saccule, and we've got our vestibular fold. Now if we continue down here, we go over the vocal ligaments, and we now call this area the vocal fold. Okay, so the vocal folds there, and we continue down here. So what we have is uh, is is if we look across here, okay, this is again just like we looked down here, okay. We're now still looking down, but now with the folds in place. So what we have is our epiglottis there, with our ariepiglottic fold across there. And although you can't now see very clearly the difference between the vocal folds being lower than the vestibular folds, what you can see is they're medially projecting. This space okay, is called the rema, okay, rema means cleft or crack, the rema glottidis. Okay? And the space between the vestibular folds okay, is called the rema vestibuli. Okay? So that's what you're looking at there. Okay? Now if we go back to this diagram across here, so we would have represented our rema glottidis there and our rema vestibuli here. And we've created a couple of spaces. We have this, what we call a glottic space here, okay, between the two folds. We have a supraglottic space above the vestibular folds and an infraglottic space below the uh, vocal folds. And if everything above the vocal folds we refer to as the, vest the vestibule of the larynx, okay, which is the, uh, the waiting area, the holding room. Okay. Now the reason why we basically why I spend quite a bit of time explaining it like this is because if you were to take a um, a laryngoscope, okay, and you're going to look down, okay, what we are looking at now is a real life fish. Okay, so this is the epiglottis, just like we saw before. This is your ariepiglottic fold there. Okay, what you see here, okay, here is your vestibular folds. Okay, and sometimes the vestibular folds at this point we sometimes refer to them as the false vocal folds or false vocal cord. Okay. And below that, it's very difficult to get the, uh, the sort of above-below uh, perspective here, okay? But below that, but certainly projecting more medially, is the vocal folds. And we sometimes, if we, you, we talk about these as the true vocal cord, okay? So we've got the true vocal cord and the false vocal cord, or the vestibular fold and the vocal fold, okay? So that's what we are looking at there.